Hey everyone, welcome back. It's been a really long time. I've kind of taken a bit of a break because I got a little burnt out with videos and it was springtime and I've been doing a lot of mountain biking and racing and stuff like that. So I was just kind of distracted and focused on other things. Also, I was just kind of in the middle of a project that um, I wasn't too excited about for some reason. That's kind of bad. But um, as it's getting closer to being done, I am getting excited about it and I figure I should finally take all the footage I have from the build and put it together and share it with you guys. So that's what this video is about. I don't get through it all in this video because there's a lot of footage and a lot of stuff I do with this project. But here's the first half until I come to a point where I'm in a bit of trouble. So watch to see what I come up with. Thanks for watching. For this project I decided to go with solid sepele wood. Um, so it, I bought it in rough form and I spent a long time planing it and got it to a point that looks like this. Okay, at this point I should use the jointer to get one edge straight before I make cuts to the dimensions I need. But to be honest, eyeballing these, it's already pretty straight. So I'm going to go straight to the table saw because I'm a little bit lazy. One thing about this type of material is the grain is so straight and vertical that I wasn't so worried about not jointing it first because I figured it would keep its shape and, and work out nicely and it did. It didn't budge one bit, no wood movement at all. So I was able to rip it and then I was able to cross cut it, which you see here, to the dimensions I needed. I normally wouldn't use solid wood for a speaker building project, but this one was so small and I wanted to do a little trick, which I'll describe up ahead here. So now that I have all my pieces, I just glued them all together into the rough shape of a speaker box. Then I flush trimmed everything. This really isn't any different of process than I would use for MDF or something like that. This is where things got a little different because because the wood is so thick, it's one inch thick, um, and the box is so small, I thought I should do a curved box and I can kind of fake it. I can do some faux curves. Because the wood is so thick, I can remove material in the shape of an exterior curve even though the interior will still be just a plain box. So that's what I'm doing here. It helps to have quite a powerful saw that won't slow down and will just kind of breeze through the wood for safety and just because it's such a deep cut. Okay, I wanted to make a second cut, but the box was too tall. Now that I removed that material, my fence wasn't really supporting it. So, um, I added a taller fence. Now the second cut, uh, because all I have now is just an angled piece of wood, I needed the second cut to make it more curved. Here you can see I'm moving much less material because the first cut removed the bulk of the material. Now I just clean up the edges. It's still not round like a curve, but it's getting close to a s kind of a rounded curve. Now I just gotta add the tops and bottoms. Okay, um, I'm gonna use the flush trim bit to get everything smooth and uh, even but there's a lot of excess here so I just used the bandsaw to zip off the excess which was clumsier than I thought it would be and here I'm using the flush trim bit to make everything flush and smooth and even so I miscalculated how much Sapele I needed and I didn't want to run back to the hardware store and buy more. 
It was kind of a dumb mistake. Um, I made a few of them in this project. So I grabbed a piece of maple. It's quite curly, a little bit figured. Um, I figured I could resaw it and book match a baffle uh, to kind of give it a bit of contrast with the darker Zapele wood um, mixed with this lighter, blonder maple. So here I am resawing it on the bandsaw, which is a super slow, boring process because my bandsaw isn't really all that powerful. And um, but I I did it. I got through it eventually. The matching here didn't work out so good, but it is good there. This is kind of something went wrong here. Unfortunately, the kerf just lost some of the message between the two pieces. A little bit there too. But up here is good, although I don't know if the boards are wide enough. And down here is pretty good. So then I have to plane these boards because they're now rough cut and not quite to the dimension I need. Which means the book matching between the two faces will be lost even further. So that's not really a good thing, but nothing I can really do about that either. So again, this project is just presenting some issues to me that I'm not... That doesn't get me too excited. I cross-cut the pieces uh, to get what I need for the baffle. And then I just edge glue them together because we're book matching this to get a, the ultimate width that I need for the baffle. Nothing too exciting here. And now that they're glued together, I give them a quick plane just to get the excess glue off and make sure they're flush and even between the two faces, which means I lose even more book matching. And then I glue them to the speaker. Because this is solid wood, I want to use a lot of clamping pressure, make sure everything's tight, and also I was really checking to make sure the wood seemed stable and dry as I cut it and planed it before I moved on. Okay, now that that's on there, I cut a chamfer to get rid of the excess um, off the baffle. So on my piece of maple here, I didn't really have a wide enough piece um, to do what I wanted to do, but I thought I was going to get away with it. I thought. I thought there was going to be more space here to cut a chamfer, and I knew it was going to be close, and I thought, well, you know, I might have an angled chamfer or something like that, but then when I glued it on there, I instantly realized that it was way more than I anticipated. And then I thought, well, let's keep going. I let it, like, I glued it. And now I'm here, and I'm really starting to see how much of it is a problem. Now, thankfully, it's got kind of a natural wave. I'm I'm a little bit tempted to leave it and just make it a feature, but I also feel like that looks really stupid and it looks like I screwed up. So I'm just trying to get an idea here of So there's roughly my drivers. They'll be a little closer together maybe, but the woofer is right on the edge. So I can't really take any more of that off of there except off the sides. I can't take this edge down any more than I already have. So I gotta really think about this and what I'm gonna do here. I might, I, I guess I could take a little more off of each side. Not sure what to do. This is, I'm in a bit of trouble here.